Dr. Mark Changizi here with your science moment. Today I'm going to talk about morality police. Um, we have a world where we used to be a good example, you can imagine, to the tyrannies in the world, where uh, we didn't have morality police. We wouldn't have dared to have people walk around the streets and lambast and chastise people for not wearing the right sort of thing. It's um, but instead, over the last two and a half years, much of the world, including the West, that cherishes freedom of dress, bodily autonomy, um, was involved in telling everybody, and from their neighbors yelling at one another, top down, and in all directions, behaving the way that, in fact, the morality police do in Iran. Now, this completely undermines people in Iran's argument. Now you could say, well, gosh, Mark, you're comparing masks versus hijabs, and this is just totally different. First of all, this is not different. The forces that were underlying these, these kinds of psychosocial forces are the same. And if you notice at the time, the people who were arguing for masks, they were like snitches on the street, like the morality police, the, the regular people on the street, not necessarily the paid morality police. They um, enforced it because they believed it was righteously good. They would chase people around. They would chase people around the grocery stores, uh, yelling at them for killing grandmas and attacking them just as the regular people to often do on the streets for a woman whose locks are showing sufficiently, you know, too much outside of her, her hijab, much less a woman who's not wearing a hijab at all. These are the same kinds of psychosocial forces. Those people who are behaving in that way are unclean, right? They're threats to society. They're, these outgroups are unclean. And in this case, she's an unclean woman. She's a whore, all these kinds of, you know, not a good Muslim. And in our case, um, they're actually infectious and dangerous. Now, you could still say, look, still on uh, masks or, you know, these, these are functional things that surgeons wear. And so it's totally different than hijabs, which are enforced just on women. And this is not a fair comparison. Um, first of all, the interventions, these draconian interventions pushed upon everybody throughout the world over your faces were not in fact functional. Study after study has shown what we knew before 2020, which is they don't slow respiratory viruses. They have many harms. Surgeons never wore them for slowing respiratory viruses. They're warn to stop spittle from going in the field, which is always bacterial ridden, and mostly getting, you know, preventing wound goop from getting in your mouth or nose. The claimed functionality of masks is just false. Right? RCTs all show little or no effect. And just mechanistically, they can't because these are aerosols. They're like smoke. And on the functional side, you can say, well, still, even so, you know, we thought that they worked, whereas hijabs is, is clearly, they, they don't do anything. Well, I'm not so sure. How do you know? Have you done a study that shows that hijabs don't, in fact, reduce libido amongst the population and qualitatively change the nature of society such that maybe it's a better place to live? Maybe if you value, because all cost-benefit calculations also concern the utilities involved. And maybe you could argue that people there um, value more highly uh, the lack of libido, you know, spread throughout society. And once you include that in the calculation, well, they work, right? The answer in both cases is I don't know whether they're functional and I don't care. Right? That's the whole point of civil liberties. Civil liberties um, are the final answer. You just say, look, no, you don't have the right to do, but it's an, I perceive it to be, an, no, you don't have the right to do that independent of your cost-benefit analysis, um, whatever your utilities are, um, however great the interventions you think might work, you don't have the right. And that has to be true also, not just for ourselves, but in order to make arguments against tyrannies who are oppressing others, in this case, just focusing on the one facet there, which is their hi mandatory hijab, you can't effectively make the argument that hijab, mandatory hijab is wrong when you've enforced your entire population and enforced it yourself on the street 
um, uh, of wearing masks. You can't have both positions in a consistent way. And the only way that you might try to do that is in a utilitarian fashion. And uh, you can't, in fact, do that in this case at all. So um, I think, from my point of view, much of the world has undermined the case that we have as, a, as, a, as, as the world in arguing against these kinds of um, violations of bodily autonomy. You can't make the arguments that we could anymore, given what we, together as a society, you know, not us, team reality, what we have done. We undermine freedom generally, and we've heard it potentially for a generation. That was your science moment.